we're asked to solve this one. And so, and we're going to solve this one using the quadratic formula. Well, in order to use the quadratic formula, the very, very first thing that we need to do is to put everything onto one side, okay? Uh, and we can choose, we can move this one over to this side, or we can move these two over to the left-hand side. It really doesn't matter when you're using the quadratic formula. I chose to take these two and move them over to the left-hand side. So in order to do that, I've got to get rid of 2x over here, so that means I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. 2x squared minus 2x, those two cannot be combined, so that just leaves me 2x squared minus 2x. Then I just have to move this negative 1 over. In order to get rid of a negative 1, I have to add 1 to both sides. So now I've got everything over to one side, just like we're wanting. Now what I can do, um, because it's equal to 0, nothing else is on this side, now I can plug it into the quadratic formula. And remember that the quadratic formula is this negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now, that's great and all, but we need to figure out what a, b, and c are. Well, that comes right here from this format that we've got right here. So a is this number way out in front here, right before the x squared term, the coefficient there. That's a 2. B is, we call this a linear term, this is the one with just the variable, uh, the exponent on this is just 1, so this is a negative 2, that's where my B negative 2 came from. And C is 1, that's the constant, the one without a variable, it's just all by itself. And that's why it's important that we get it all onto one side, then you'll get a, an accurate reading here of what A, B, and C are. Because otherwise you would have thought that B was 2 over here, so we need to move all those over first, otherwise we get um, incorrect numbers. Now what we're going to do is just plug all of these in for b, and then, in other words, b, I've got negative 2, I'm just going to plug that in right here and here. a, I'm going to plug in right here and here, and then c, I'm going to plug in right here. So I plugged all those in, um, and you can see that I use parentheses here. The only step that I skipped is right here. This is negative times negative 2, which is a positive 2. Okay, that's the only thing. Other than that, I put in uh, parentheses here. When you're typing this one in your calculator, make sure you're using parentheses or get the right answer because negative 2 squared is positive 4, not negative 4. Because I'm using these parentheses, the squared applies to everything inside the parentheses there. So now let's take it another step. Um, I know that uh, negative 2 squared is 4. I know that negative 4 times 2 is negative 8 plus 1, or times 1 is negative 8. So we're just simplifying it just one step further. 2 times 2 is 4. Okay, so I've uh, reduced it down a little bit further, I can still do some inside of the square root sign. I've got 4 minus 8. 4 minus 8 is negative 4. Well, now I've got a negative inside of my radical, uh, and that's where our imaginary numbers come in. So in order to simplify this one, well, I know that the square root of 4 is 2. So the square root of negative 4, this negative inside, is my imaginary number. So that's going to be 2i. All right. Well, now the last thing I need to do here, I look at this. Um, I can reduce this still. I see that I've got a 2 can go into all three of those, so I take a 2 out of all three. I divide this one by 2, that gives me 1. Divide this one by 2, that gives me 1. And divide this one by 2, and that gives me 2. And that is my final answer. Remember, if it can go into all three, it can be reduced then. If this one over here were a 3 or something, that would be my final answer. I could not reduce it. But because I can divide it by all three of these numbers here, I can reduce this one.